My name is Ralph Robert Moore. This is my website, Sentence. And I th thought as an experiment this month, instead of doing a written lately, which I normally do, and which I've been doing for the past 10 years, I do a uh, video lately. And I'm doing it using Flip, which is a camcorder that Barry and I bought, in order to do a documentary on Joe, Mary's dad, when he visited us over the, the past holidays. He was here a little over two weeks. As I said, uh, I did get the camcorder because Joe was coming down here. And I wanted to see uh, if we could do a documentary, have him talk each day for about an hour. So we got about 14 hours of footage altogether. And what I'm doing right now is cataloging that. I'm looking again at each day's shoot and just deciding what is in that that is, that's useful that we can put into about a 90-minute documentary. And it's hard to do because a lot of it is fascinating. Uh, Joe is a great rock on tour. He knows how to tell a terrific story. But, for instance, there is one story of his about when he went AWOL during World War II. He had uh, appendicitis, and he was operated on and then uh, brought to one of the islands in the Pacific. He was in the Pacific Theater during the war to recuperate. And he apparently just got out of bed one day and put on his clothes and walked off into the jungle. So it's, it's a fascinating story. Unfortunately, the story lasts for about 26 minutes. And if it's going to be a 90-minute documentary, obviously you can't have a third of it just devoted to this one incident. So uh, I am going to have to cut it back. And that will be an interesting process trying to do that. Uh, what I did do and what if you ever shoot a documentary on someone, I recommend you do this too, is um, whereas for most days... Joe would just talk about his life in chronological order, which would consist of a lot of anecdotes. What I did ask Joe to do one day is speak for about an hour just about his whole life uh, from beginning to end. And so obviously there's not as much detail, but you do get the chronology that way, and I think it'll be a good lead-in to where I can have part of that, and then when there is a particular story that is even more interesting, then I can go to the footage where we have him talking even further about something. Um, I'm sure some of you are saying right now, Jesus, you couldn't even brush his hair for this? But normally I don't. Uh, Mary and I go to the outside about once every three weeks now. Uh, since Mary's stroke, we don't go out that much. And I do work from home. I uh, work over the Internet. And so there's really no need for us to go out. So when we do go out, about once every three weeks, it is a little bit of an offense that we have to um, make sure we get everything while we're out there because we're buying supplies for about three weeks. So, for instance, yesterday uh, we went into the city because Mary had to go to her cardiologist's office for a blood stick. There you go, lady. One of her cats is rubbing against the bottom of the tripod. So... After we did that, after we were in the city and we checked the Coonden level, that's when we started buying all of our groceries for the next three weeks. And that is a process. Uh, we have to go to several stores because we can't get everything at one store because we don't like everything at one store. Um, Kroger, for instance. Hi, lady. Kroger is good for uh, packaged goods, for canned goods, uh, dry mixes, things like that. But not really for much else. So we go to Kroger first because that's also where Mary's pharmacy is to pick up her prescriptions. And then uh, we also ship the box of stuff to Joe at uh, Office Max. Then we came home because we had bought a lot of deli meat and we put all that away. And then the next thing we did is we went to uh, uh we came home, put everything away. Then we went back out. We went to Cox Farms. It's a farmer's market. They have a lot of fresh produce there. We really like it. Um, a lot of uh, chilies and everything, which we use a lot in our cooking. And then we went to Tom Thumb to get all of our meats, all of our dairy products. We brought that home. So by the time we get home, we're pretty exhausted, especially considering that nowadays we don't really do that that often. It's not like an everyday thing. So we put all the perishable food in the We have three refrigerators. And we put all the perishable food in the refrigerators. And then the next day, today, 
is when we package up everything. And originally what we did, we had, um, we saw it in the supermarket, we bought it. It's Reynolds makes it, and it's a handheld device. It's a vacuum sealer, Reynolds vacuum sealer, something like that. But anyway, you buy a Reynolds bag that has a hole in it. You put meat in there, and then you hold the Reynolds uh, device against the hole in the back and it sucks out all the air so you don't have any oxygen in there to hasten the spoiling of the, of the food and then you freeze it and it was great and we committed fully to it and then it turned out Reynolds stopped making it because not enough people were buying it so we decided to see well we still want to do this the vacuum seal, seal stuff because it is a lot better so we found another device which is a lot more expensive but it's about it's a big unit and we did that when you when it's sealing it almost sounds like an airplane taking off but it does a great job and there's something really very fascinating about watching it if you have a bag for instance and you put in a steak and you start sucking the air having the device suck the air out it is fascinating just to see the clear through plastic slowly crinkle and creep closer and closer to the borders of the steak and then absolutely hug the steak to where there's no space at all around the steak in the bag. And it looks beautiful. I mean, it looks like a work of art. The uh, vacuum bag itself becomes almost like a frame, a unique frame around uh, the steak. I, I like steak a lot, obviously. But so anyway, we did all that today. So, for instance, tonight, we're having moussaka. And moussaka is a Greek dish. We both love Greek cooking. And it's made with uh, ground meat, either beef or lamb. We're using beef. And traditionally with uh, thinly sliced eggplants. And it has kind of a layered effect. And then on uh, the top you put a bechamel sauce, which is just, um, you make a roux, a traditional French roux with butter and flour. And then you bring it up to whatever thickness you want with milk. And then in this case we're flavoring it with uh, Parmesan cheese. This is Lady, instantly, one of her cats. Hi Lady. It's a guest appearance by Lady. But this particular recipe that we're making, you cube the eggplants instead of slicing them. So we'll see how that turns out. It'll be interesting. As I say in future lately's, what I'll, if I do this anymore, and if Lady will agree to a reappearance, what I'll probably do is try to open it up a little bit more so it shows me and Mary in activities. For instance, cooking a meal or working on our garden or investigating a strange noise somewhere in the house or petting our cats but for now I just want to see how this turns out just the sheer mechanics of it what it what it involves and I'll probably do it as a YouTube clip which means it has to be under 10 minutes and I, I think we're still under 10 minutes anyway um, you know a lot of times over the years I've spoken to people on the phone without ever having met them and then when you do finally meet them, they never look the way you, you think they're going to look. And I'm sure to some degree that's the case uh, with me as well. Like you see what I look like uh, and how I talk and how I move my head and everything. The next time I'll, I'll try to brush my hair. But this is Ralph Robert Moore. This is Sentence. And this is the Lately for February 1st, 2010. Have a great evening.